Hey guys, this is Hartley here, and in today's video we're going to be breaking down my remix of Ditto's track, Thank You. But before we get into the breakdown and the analysis of the track, I just want to go over the track, play you guys a bit of a preview, just so you can get familiarized with it. As you guys can hear, this track is basically a full-on tech house track. It just takes on a basic drum kit with a bass line that backs the drum and the groove, and then we have a vocal with a bit of effects at the bottom of it. And in types of tracks like these, specifically tech house, the main elements of these tracks to get right is actually getting the hi-hats to be groovy, get that clap to sit nicely in the mix, and to get that bass line to kind of just sit in between the kicks and be kind of smooth side chained and really just grooving along with the rest of the track for this demonstration i'm just going to go and grab the busiest part of the track where we have all of these elements playing together and we're just going to go over them one by one just so you can see kind of how we're adding them into the track so starting off with the first section of the drums we're going to do the kick drum first so the kick drum is essentially just a basic tech house kick where the only thing that we did to this was we came over to the adsr section and we activated the envelope, turned everything down except for the hold. So the reason why we did this is because we wanted the kick drum to be half a beat. So by doing that, if you come into the piano roll and you make this kick drum play for half a beat, then it will only play for that half. So I don't actually have to side chain the kick. I can just select it to play for half a beat and then we are sorted. We don't have to worry about it clashing with the bass line ever again. With regards to the EQs or any of the processing, we only have a 40 hertz roll off and we have 188 hertz brought down by 6 dBs. The reason why I took this frequency out was because it was a little bit boxy and I was adding a bit of kind of low end mud into the track. So if I solo everything out and I just play this part of the track for you. You can kind of hear that it's a kind of frequency that we don't want in the track. Then on top of that, I did a bit of a roll off at 20 hertz, uh, at 20 kilohertz, just because I just wanted to tame down those high frequencies just a little bit, just a slight amount. And on top of that, we have the clap, which is as basic as it can be. It is just a normal standard tech house clap. Where with basically almost no processing, I just had an EQ. And this is the solid state logic EQ. If you don't have the solid state logic and you're working on Ableton or if you're working in FL Studio, just copy the settings. Um, Ableton's glue compressor works, it's basically a, a mimic of this um, compressor, so you can just copy the settings and you can just use it as is. So we're using a 0.3 millisecond attack time, the release is a 1.2 second release, and we have a 4 to 1 ratio. And in this example, we're going for around about 2 to 4 dBs of compression. After this, we added in an EQ because we didn't want it to clash with the low end, kind of get that mud all up in the bass and the kicks business. So we're having a high pass filter at around about 333 hertz, just because we wanted to take off all that bass frequencies, don't want to add extra mud into the track. And then moving on to the next section of the track is the kind of the hi-hat section, where in this track I'm using one, two, three, f kind of four hi-hat grooves that I'm trying to layer together, trying to get this track to groove nicely, try to get the hi-hats to sit equally on top of each other. And this is kind of where it gets a little bit tricky is where you have to pick your samples perfectly right, because otherwise you won't get that groove in your track. So the first hi-hat sample, we just had a bit of a high pass filter on it. And it's playing an offbeat rhythm. So we're playing it on every offbeat. So kind of all in all. sounds like that then on top of that we added a close hat rhythm kind of playing this little groove over here where I had the first note play full velocity and then I brought down the second note just a slight bit to add a bit of groove into the track because if I bring this both of these up you'll start to hear that it just doesn't sound as groovy it sounds too robotic if I bring that down just a slight bit 
down to about 50 58 percent it just adds a bit of swing a bit of groove onto that track without actually having to move the notes off, off grid so if i play that with the open hat we can kind of hear that the hats are kind of starting to swing together trying to sit together a little bit more then on top of both of those hats i added another kind of hi-hat just to supplement in between all of those which is just this little hi-hat with a bit of a high pass filter on it again and all together so that's that if i play that with the kick and the clap You can kind of hear that that is already trying to come together, trying to glue together nicely. And the only thing that is missing from this is kind of just a loop to kind of supplement the background of the track. So in this example over here, I just pulled up a loop out of a sample pack and it's just sitting in the background of the track. You can see here, I've just got an EQ removing all the low end, kind of taming down some of the high end so it doesn't clash too much with the hi-hats. After that, we added another glue compressor and then I, I was side chaining it to the kick but I decided to take that off at some stage. But all in all, this loop sounds like this. And the main idea of this loop was to kind of have it sitting below the track, kind of have it supplementing the track, not being the main element, but being a driving force of the track. So I play all these drums together. You can hear that that loop kind of ties everything together, kind of glues it all together really nicely. And then all of these drums are sending into a drum bus. And the processing I have on the drum bus is a CLA-2A. All this is is basically a compressor with a really quick um, attack time and a really quick re release time. And I'll just play you this CLA-2A right here. And you can see we're literally just going for about negative one dBs of compression. The reason why I'm not doing too much compression with the CLA 2A is because I'm just trying to tame those nice transient frequencies. You could get this exact same sound as if you got a normal like red three compressor. And then I'm going to do a three to one ratio. Tack time is going to be kind of fastish. I'm going to do one millisecond. So that's kind of how I would do this in a normal compressor. But then again, I like the, how the CLA-2A sounds. It is, is a little bit different. So if you have the CLA-2A, go ahead and use it. After that, we've got the ARTG Mastering Live. So a lot of you might not have this plugin. Broken down into its simple parts is this is a... The left side is basically just going to send signal in. So it's kind of just got a, um, a, a trim on it. The tape equalizer I've set to flat, so it really isn't doing anything. And this whole section of here really isn't doing anything. It's just sending signal into this EQ. And this EQ, I've got a stereo EQ. So I'll just solo out all the sections. You can kind of see what frequencies I'm pulling out and raising. So you've got the high frequencies. And I'm just releasing down negative one dBs. It's at about 8.1. The mid frequencies, I'm not touching it at all. It's just set to zero. Then we have this low end section over here where I've done a negative 2 dB drop at around 362. And the low end I haven't touched at all. So we're basically just focusing on the low mids and the, and the, and the high frequencies over here. So after that, this is a compressor section, which is not active. Same with this last filter section, also not active at all. Then after this, we have another SSL compressor with a 0.1 millisecond release. I mean, 0.1 millisecond attack, 0.1 release, and we have a 2 to 1 ratio. And we're just going to tame down about 2 dBs of compression over here. And that all together just ties up that entire drum bus. Um, there is nothing more to this drum bus. There is a bit of percussions that we have. So we have percussions playing out, playing throughout the track and... If I solo them out, they literally just add a bit of groove onto the track over here. So if I add those percussions into the drum bus and I just try and solo it all together, you can kind of hear what it sounds like.
And then after that, we have another drum full, which is sitting over here. I'm just gonna mute this percussion so you can hear what the drum full sounds like. Which is literally just a drum full, and then we have these two effects at the bottom over here coming in behind that just to basically make this uh, transition a little bit smoother in the track um, going from section to section so going on to the baseline of the track so with the baseline i have two presets selected here on serum but if you open up the mixer you can see that only one of them is actually active so we have one sending to channel 10 and one sending to channel 11 we have the one on channel 10 being active. Don't worry about the one on channel 11. This was just me experimenting with different baselines while I was creating the track. This baseline comes straight out of Serum and it is comes out of one of my packs here labeled Lyle Thotson. I have it here BA Clune 1. So this is kind of like a Clune style baseline. Um, clone, Clune, however you want to say his name. I'm not a professional at names, so that won't be me. So in this track over here, we kind of have this um, morphed sine wave that I kind of created in the edit section. So if you come down to edit, you can kind of select a sine wave and then you can kind of almost preemptively reform your sine wave to look kind of differently. And that's how I got that sound of that. Then on top of this, we dropped this an octave and then we have oscillator two, just a standard saw wave dropped an octave as well with three voices, detune sitting at 0 0.05 and the blend sitting at 57. So. With those two together, we did add a sub into this with a negative one, dropped it down a negative one. We did select a uh, a triangle wave here, um, and then we also added a noise. So before we get into the faults and everything like that, the noise section of this track is quite important. So we used the attacks and we came down to XF Kick Attack 22, selected that one. And we did, the most important part about this is if you if you're using this as a baseline, you've got to select this mode that enables the one shot. Um, and then after that, we activated a filter of a low 24. We have the drive sitting at 57, cut off at 213, no resolution, no fat, and the pan sitting in the middle. I'm going to go over all the modulation in just a second. But on envelope one, over here, we have a 0.5 millisecond attack. We have the 361 delay and then, I mean, decay, and then we have a negative 34 sustain, just creating a simple up and down pattern. So if I go in and I just do this, you can see that just coming up and going straight out. And envelope one isn't um, attached onto anything, it's not modulating anything, it's just shaping the overall sound. Then going into envelope two, this is where it gets a little more different. Uh, we have a 381 millisecond decay, Nick, uh, we have a 21.93 sustain and then a 56 millisecond release. So I did drag this slightly down a little bit just so I wanted to get that instant hit off on the on the baseline and then it slowly comes down, kind of just creating that nice groove. So then on this envelope two, we have it modulated onto the noise. Um, we had it modulated onto the noise and then we also had it modulated onto the filter cutoff on the effect section. So if you come over to the effect section, the effect I have here is distortion. The most important part here is to select tube distortion and then select post. And you see how we have this frequency selected 239. What's happening is the distortion is kind of distorting the baseline. And then after the distortion, we have an EQ kind of cutting out all that um, high frequencies, that upper ha harmonics in the track, kind of lowering it down keeping it a dark sound. So then we have the drive around 50% and the mix all the way up. And then we did add envelope three onto the drive of the track. So envelope three over here, settings are the decays 205, zero um, sustain, 15 release. And then we just drag this straight onto the drive of the track over there and we selected it up. So every time this track plays, it'll open up that um, distortion for the initial hit and then it'll bring it back down just creating a nice little bit of percussive attack. And then next up we have the phaser. So the phaser is only here. Um, I don't think I changed anything besides the frequency. So the frequency you're just gonna drag all the way up to the top and then you're gonna put the dry weight on about 20%. What the frequency does is it literally just makes this baseline a little bit more fat. So I'm just gonna drag the frequency down and then I'm gonna drag it all the way up just so you can kind of hear what it's doing. And then with the, with the dry wet, we just bring it down. 
then we have this nice equal blend of kind of a dirty sub and like a nice clean air space. So next up we have the filter. Filter section is an MG Low 24 set around 125. We have no resolution, the drive is set to 20% and we have the fat set to 15. Then after that we have the mix set to 100% and this is where it gets interesting. So we have envelope 2 set to basically spike on this, um, basically modulate onto this cutoff. So we have it set for 50%. And if you notice here on envelope 2, we don't have it set for the cutoff over here. We don't have any, any modulation set for that. And then well, what we've done here is then add an, a compressor afterwards with the threshold but like negative 13 we have a four to one attack i mean four to one ratio attack is 90 milliseconds release is 90 milliseconds and then we just um, gained it up so with the compressor the compressor is optional so in this track i didn't use it because i didn't feel like the track needed that extra bit of pump but if you do use this uh preset in a in a track that needs a bit of extra oomph feel free to activate the compressor or save it with the compressor but just deactivate it then this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So I have selected the mod wheel um, and, I've, and I kind of set some, some modulation for the mod wheel. So I took the mod wheel, dragged it onto the, resolu uh, the re resonance, I set it onto the drive, and then as well as I set it onto the drive of the um, distortion, and then I set it onto the frequency and the Q. But to be honest with you, in this track, I don't even use the modulator. It's just there because in case I wanted to use it at a later track, I'll just quickly show you guys exactly what it sounds like. It kind of just makes it a little bit more aggressive. Um, with the with the macros, I have the attack set for this this kick attack over here, which basically just brings it up for the track, and then the harmonics we have this wave table position set. Um, cutoff is cutoff of the um, the, the track. Then we also have cutoff number two. So cutoff one, I think is set for, yeah, cutoff one is set for this cutoff over here. So if I turn this up, you'll see this kind of just opening up nicely like that. That's kind of what it's set to do. And then cutoff number two is set for the main cutoff of the track on this MG Low 24 filter. And with the mo the mod wheel and the cutoff one and two, we have like quite a bit of variety to, to try and adapt and change this kind of baseline throughout the track just to kind of get it a little more groovy, kind of get it to fit the track or to fit the section of the track that we wanted to play in. So on top of that baseline, uh, the only EQs we have here, this one is a effect EQ so for example over here you'll see it kind of moving after that we have the CLA 76 set to blackie we're doing a four attack we're doing a six release and we have the four ratio set and then after that we're running the C6 um, so what the C6 is doing, it's literally just bringing down this frequency. Which is just a bit of muddiness in the track, just trying to tame it down a little bit. And then after that, we have this low sub frequencies. It's just doing a little bit of taming on that as well. Trying to get those frequencies to kind of sit together really nicely. So on this, we're running a 0.5 attack and we're running a 40 millisecond release. And then look, we're kind of just going for around two to three decibels of gain reduction. So if you guys don't have the C6, look, use any form of multiband compressor. With the low band, I would just aim for about two dBs of compression um, just to get it a little bit smoother, Get um, allow it to your listener to kind of just get that track in, get that bass frequencies in nice and smooth. And then with the um, kind of section where we're trying to like reduce the low end, uh, the, the boxiness, I'm going for a little bit more because I'm kind of using this as like a surgical kind of um, compressor where I want to just remove a certain element uh, really nicely. And after that, we just have an EQ going. We have 35 hertz, just taped, like rolling it off there. It's the same with the high end. And then after that, we just have it side chain to the kick. So what we did was we took the kick, we side chain it straight to the baseline. So whenever the kick plays, our baseline's ducking. 
So if you're new to music and you don't know how to do that, all you have to do is come down to the kick drum, select your kick drum, come to the bass. At the bottom here, just right click and select sidechain to this track. Once you do that, if you open up the Fruity Limiter and you come down to the comp section where it says sidechain, you just right click and click and select the, the track name. So for me, it'll be kick. And then you select your threshold. For this track, I'm doing negative 37. And then my ratio is sitting at 2.6. Attack all the way off and my release is around 105. So if I play the bass line and the drums all together, it is basically the entire track all in all finished and done. And there you go. The next thing up that I did add in was the vocal, which was the main driving element of the track. And the only thing I did to this vocal was basically add some EQ, uh, just to do kind of tame down the vocals. So we had this frequency re removed and this frequency as well. Because I knew that if this track was going to be played loud over festival speakers or even just loud enough on a hi-fi system, then those two frequencies over there might start peaking out, like kind of irritating the listener's ears. So I took that out a little bit. Then I did a main roll off with 250 Hertz on a high pass filter. And after that, that was it. We just added a bit of side chain onto the kick drum as well. And boom, bam, that's kind of the track done and dusted. We, we next up, we're going to talk about the kind of effects elements of the track and go over the arrangement, breaking down the effects section of the track. It's pretty simple. We have two risers. And then also a crash sample. The last thing that we have here before every drop, I added in a bit of a scratch. Just to kind of give a bit of an impact. So once the effects are done, we can move on to the arrangement of the track. So the only things that I really did to the arrangement of the track here um, that are kind of notable is that in all the breaks, I added in a EQ onto the master chain, cutting everything above 129 hertz. So this EQ gets activated in all the breaks just to kind of remove all the bass. Just to kind of get the track to be a little bit more smoother. Then on the second build up over here, we have a reverb setting on the drum bus. So we have this reverb where we modulated the wet to kind of open up. And then we did the same thing onto the master chain where we had a reverb kind of with the same settings where we just modulated the wet to kind of come up to give a nice impact, um, to kind of give a nice build up into this section of the track. So all in all, that is basically the track. If you guys want me to break down the master chain, please do let me know down below. Please consider commenting, liking, subscribing. If you guys do, if you guys do enjoy the content, I will be making more videos like these. Just let me know down below what you guys want to see in the future.